Thank you for joining me today for this GFM talk. In this presentation, I aim to share with you the theory and inspiration behind our atelier model. My name is Kerry Bramley. I'm one of the assistant head teachers working across Bay House and Green Park schools. Some years ago, I was lucky enough to go on an educational visit to Milan with a group of art teachers and subject leaders as well as the art inspector for Hampshire. We visited a number of primary, middle and secondary schools in Milan. And it was during this visit that we engaged with a large Reggio Emilia school in the city centre. I remember being in awe of the way in which a studio space was used as a central place of learning. This space oozed colour, materials and inviting work zones. Everything was highly considered and set to inspire the children. It has always been a goal of mine to take inspiration from the Reggio Atelier to create a space specific to creative interventions. We currently have two GFM ateliers, a decommissioned classroom in the art department at Breen Park and within the orangery area of the listed building at Bay House. This atelier at the Bay House site is a newer addition with the initiative first coming to fruition at the Broom Park site. I'm going to firstly share with you this clip that really brings um, to the forefront some of the key threads behind Reggio Emilia and it helps to give a beginning to what inspired the way in which we are operating the ateliers at Broom Park and Bay House. The Radio Amelia, a book in a nutshell. An educational philosophy based on the image of the child and of human beings as possessing strong potentials for development and as a subject of rights who learns and grows in the relationships with others. Developed by a young and inspirational teacher, Loris Malaguzzi, he promoted the idea of children as active participators in their own learning in a unique reciprocal relationship with their teachers. Learning is an active process, not a transmission of prepackaged knowledge. Rather, the child has a hundred languages meaning children have multiple ways to express themselves. In the Reggio Emilia approach, the educator is considered to be three things, the teacher, the child and the environment. Teachers are given non-contact time to give them a chance to talk together about the children and to be able to write up their observations and plan what will be offered to the children next. They value and encourage child-initiated activity they challenge and provoke ideas through open-ended questioning. They respect the child's own ideas. They allow the child to make his own mistakes and learn from them. They closely observe the children to document the child's progress and to judge appropriate moments to intervene. A Reggio school aims to create a welcoming, nurturing, home-like environment that's recognised for its potential to inspire children. It is a place of encounter and connection, interaction and dialogue. Reggio Emilia was developed after World War II by a teacher, Loris Malaguzzi, and parents in the villages around Reggio Emilia in Italy. According to Magaluzzi, the founder of Reggio Emilia, the atelier, the art studio, is a place for researching motivations and theories of children from scribbles upwards, a place for exploring variations in tools, techniques and materials with which to work. It is in the Atelier or Art Studio that children are immersed in media and ideas. It is also a place for teachers to try to understand children's intentions, thinking and learning. We heard in the clip previously about a hundred languages. The aim of the approach is teaching children how to use symbolic languages 
those symbolic languages forming around painting, sculpting, drama, music, symbols in everyday life. The program is based on the principles of respect, responsibility and community through exploration and discovery in a supportive and enriching environment based on the interests of the children through a self-guided curriculum. Exploratory is a really key thing here. It is through exploration and inspiration and interaction, etc., that the children are really engaged and proactively encouraged to take part in their making. Reggio Emilia considers the classroom to be the third teacher. That is after the parent and the teacher. In an atelier within the Reggio Emilia model, the teacher is often referred to as the atelierista and can often be an art specialist, a support colleague, a visiting artist in residence, etc., and can take many forms. But it's really important, particularly when looking at the examples here on this slide, to understand how the environment itself becomes a teacher in encouraging and interacting with the students. That includes the objects and artefacts around the room, the way in which the room is organised, what is on display, what is there on the table ready to invite and to be engaged with, the workspaces and the surfaces upon which a child is making, and so many more things. This was one of the things that originally really inspired me on my visit to Milan when I went to the Reggio Emilia school there, because I just couldn't believe just how wonderfully engaging the different spaces were and the way in which art and objects, examples of work, etc., had been organised in a particular way through colour and through what the things were, the way in which it had been organised to just create that wow factor as anybody came into the space. We have tried to follow this idea originally in the Broome Park Atelier, which is the atelier that came first. When you come into this room, you look around and there are lots of different things to engage with. There are lots of objects and artefacts, there's paraphernalia, there are things hanging, there are things sat in groups, there are things to, to unhook, there are things to pick up and take over to, to a table. And one of the things that we really encourage in the atelier, particularly when children are visiting for the first time and they might be a little bit anxious, a little bit unsure, maybe holding themselves back a little bit um, to, to engage with the initiative. We really encourage the children just to come in and look and touch and pick up and ask questions and really think about the different things around them. That interaction, that right to handle and explore really drives the curiosity and drives the conversation, which becomes an icebreaker, if you like, for coming and working within the space. And then that starts to set more of a foundation for the child working with us in future sessions. Taking inspiration from the Reggio Emilia concept of the art studio, as we know, named the Atelier, I've done a lot of reading and researching around the initiative. And one of the books that I have been particularly inspired by is In the Spirit of the Studio and learning from the Atelier model of the Reggio Emilia. Something that I wanted to touch on was that children learn through interacting with their peers. We know this social constructivism, the environment, as we've heard, is the third teacher. The teacher, parent and classroom are all teachers within a learning environment. And the atelier art studio plays an especially important role in enhancing and guiding the community. Children are capable people who can drive their own learning. And it's through that open ended discovery and awe and wonder 
and that that idea around being curious in their engagement with the different objects and materials and pieces of inspiration the sources that are in the atelier space that helps to create a platform for children being able to drive um, more their, their own learning within the space and we will listen a lot to the children we will talk about their interests we would talk about things that they do out of school things that they really like to make or draw create out of school and for an individual child we will try to pick on that particular thing and drive that to form some bespoke work with them um, when they come to have their atelier sessions so I'm here in the Bay House Atelier. This has been recently created using a part of the old historic building to the front of where old reception was. So we are trying to begin to create a gallery for the children that work with us in here. And then into the main area here of what was once um, the orangery, we started to create a workspace for the children that have referrals to us through the Diagnostic Hub and through liaison with year teams. At the moment we're working one-to-one -one with students in this atelier and we do have some groups um, through working with service children. We're looking to widen out into larger groups. Um, we're currently looking at a year nine intervention group starting to come over here as a slightly large group to work with us. But as you can see from the space, it's a really lovely um, environment. It's quite a special environment because of the, the um, historicness of the building. Um, and it's a really um, separate space for the children to be able to come and work with any of the art teachers that are available um, to be able to work one-to-one -one those, in those small group situations to have that opportunity to have the additional nurture and support um, in order to um, let them grow and to move forward in different ways, um, really positively. I'm here in the Broom Park Atelier, which is at the end of the art department. We've decommissioned a classroom in order to make this studio space um, that is off of main timetable. This is a much, much busier atelier um, compared to Bay House at the moment, whilst we build the Bay House um, clientele, so to speak. So we're, we're very, very established here, having started the atelier here last academic year. So we will see um, a range of groups and individuals come and access the atelier provision. This includes individual referrals through the diagnostic hub referral. This includes all key stages of the hive, so that's including key stage two coming over from Rana. Um, this includes service children, um, the uh, looked after children, uh, referrals um, that are um, coming across from the cube, uh, particularly where there is a student that is a GCSE art student, so it's giving them additional time to be working on their portfolio, plus having very personalised inter intervention um, that's been set by their normal art teacher. And we've got a range of different intervention groups. So we have a year nine intervention group that come up here once a week. And we also have specialist art therapy. Specialist art therapy is a newer addition to the atelier and is run by a licensed professional um, with uh, the diagnostic hub referral still inferring the children that are taking part in, in that type of provision. So as you can see from the space, it's been very much made into a, a very engaging studio style space where there's lots of different bits and bobs around. It's very much about wanting to engage the children in moving around and looking and handling objects. Um, and interacting with different things. Sometimes we'll go outside and we will draw outside or collect from outside and bring it back in. And we do an awful lot of clay. One of the reasons we do a lot of clay work is because of the way in which um, that, that clay is handled and then the different ways in which we can work with that type of um, skill and technique. It's very, very good 
for um, establishing a, a kind of kind, uh, calm mindset um, and a particular way of opening um, the possibilities of having dialogue at the same time as working. So there's something really lovely about working with clay and so a number of the children that come into here at some point will work with clay and you'll be able to see some of the things that we do with the children in a moment when the camera pans a little bit more around the room. But we've got some really, really um, lovely experiences that, that are going on in this space um, and it's really lovely to be able to see the difference that it begins to make with individuals or within the small group um, settings once it's established and they're coming back, coming and seeing us week upon week, building their work, building their understanding and their confidence and their dialogue and all of the things that we hope for the Atelier to also support. Um, it's not about coming here to do art. It's about so much more than that. Um, it's about all of the other things that enable a child to um, grow and flourish um, around the making that they are involved with and the support that they're getting from the staff that work in here with them. Something that I really want to uh, make a point about uh, with the Atelier model is that even though this is in the main being driven by art teachers, it's so much more than that. And it's not about outcome. It's not about the finished painting, the finished piece of ceramics. It's about how creativity is a vehicle and how the creativity is engaging the children in a variety of things and a variety of contexts. In the atelier, we aim to support the art textiles graphics curriculum because some of the children that are referred to us are studying a GCSE in one of those subjects and maybe requiring additional support, particularly if, for example, they have had very low attendance or not been attending school at all. We support the community curriculum. We support and very much drive the model through inclusion and the year teams through the diagnostic hub referral process. And this is particularly key to how we've been able to build the model for it to become as busy as what it now is, particularly at the Broom Park site. Through diagnostic hub referral, we work incredibly closely with the inclusion team and with year teams around individual students in order to open up the atelier space to them in order to support the things that I talk about in the moment. It might be that a child we are working with is involved in some way with an outside agency. We teach children in the atelier from the hive and that is at all key stages key stage two three and four we have had uh, a couple of referrals through spring garden lane and not yet through the enterprise academy uh, but that is something that we can look to in the future and we also once a week have a specialist art therapist that comes to us to work with a very carefully selected group of children. That is a 12 week program, um, after which following a review, we then look to um, initiate a new cohort to work with the therapist for then again, a program of 12 weeks. In working with any of these children from any of those contexts, we're looking for art and creativity to, and making to be a supportive tool in working with the children to facilitate discussion, communication, what I like to refer to as time to talk, a calm space, a reflective space, a space where there is thinking time, small group 
contexts or even individual or paired contexts where there really is some incredibly um, focused working with, with children. Very open experimentation and exploration, as I've said, that is not at all outcomes driven. Working with nurture groups, which helps to engage dialogue. Thinking skills, problem solving and creative thinking, which is driven through the different objects um, and sources and materials, etc., that are made available in the atelier during a session and an environment in which students feel safe and secure to engage in the above. And when it comes to our art therapist, it's about those therapeutic experiences that enables the child to work with all of those things above. Not to say that in any session there is not a level of therapy or therapeutic experience, but the art team are not trained in art therapy, although we are very, very interested in how um, the different things that we're learning from Etty our professional art therapist, we're really learning about how we can take on board some of the things that she shares with us and works with us on to bring that into the fold um, ourselves when we are running some, some of our own sessions. I've got some images here of um, the atelier at Broom Park. This is a GCSE student that was working to extend portfolio work. The hive come to us once a week, and that is all key stages. So we have a group of children that also get driven over from Rauner Junior School once a week to work with us. Um, there's some images here of the hive at key stage three, when they were working on their Olympic icons project last year. Uh, that works now on display as you go into the hive on the BP site. And it was really wonderful to see how the children took on their own icon and thought very symbolically um, about how they could represent some of the story and narrative behind that person in the way in which they adorned and, and decorated the work and worked with the materials. When we have the key stage two children, it's just absolutely delightful and they just so love coming over to the atelier. We've done quite a lot of different work with them. Um, this has included a diverse range of um, techniques, things that are incredibly hands on and a little bit removed maybe from um, more common practice. So mono printing very uh, detailed paper cutting and clay work. We've got some lovely images here of them doing mono printing for their trees project and some cutouts. And I know that Matt Walker did winter trees when he went to the group at Rauner this week. Some more mono prints there and lots and lots and lots of clay. Now clay's really interesting and Clay we do with nearly every referral. Clay has something about it that is just so therapeutic. Once a child is over the stickiness and the wet and the cold and the mess, they just absolutely love to handle the material. And there's something incredibly transformational about clay. And that is one of the reasons why we use it so much. You can achieve instant change with clay. You can see what you're doing to it in a very highly visual way, just even from just pressing it with your fingers to scratching something in, to pressing something in. Um, it's very sensory. You can feel it and you can smell it as well as seeing it. It's a product, a material and a way of working that really allows talk and making to happen at the same time more easily so than maybe other techniques do. So at the same time as engaging in the making, there can be the building of quite a lot of discussion and chit chat 
and just children opening out and being a little bit more confident and being a little bit more um, uh, wider with their dialogue. So there's something really lovely about clay, which is why we use it so much. And also the children love the reveal, the reveal of having formed something and maybe having painted something with the glaze, but then seeing what it's like once it comes out of the kiln. The key stage two children were fascinated by the clay pieces all getting packed into the kiln downstairs. Um, didn't have an idea of what a kiln might look like and then have got lots of questions around what happens um, to, as they call it, cook the clay. Um, and it, it's that, that real kind of excitement around coming back the following week and looking and seeing what your work looks like now it's been fired and how it feels different and how it looks different. Um, so it's a really lovely tool for us. And it's something that we keep using over and over, but building the techniques and building the experiences and the ideas that the children have in working with it. The Atelier model has been really fortunate in also being able to drive um, the community kitchen moving forward at Broome Park. So again, like the Atelier on the Broome Park site, we have decommissioned one of the food kitchens at Broome Park, played around with the space to create a very large central area for the children to gather around and eat and make and talk and plan their meals etc around and then the space the spaces the stations in which they actually do um, engage with their with their cooking um, this space is really um, there again for interaction based um, sessions it again is used by every key stage of the hive. It also involves um, use by year nine intervention group, individual referrals, sometimes from Bay House, uh, students being um, brought up to the space. Um, and also we have service children, looked after children that come and work in space too. And we're hoping to open out with um, doing some joining up between the atelier and the community kitchen on some joint projects. Um, we've got a soup bowl project um, that, that we're interested in getting started that's going to also be supported by the Duke of Edinburgh um, team. And this has also moved across into uh, how Tom Morgan is driving ahead with a team of people in the walled garden on the Broome Park site. This site, although um, still in the making and still undergoing um, a renovation, if you like, with volunteers and staff, is already uh, interacting with some of our children. Again, a year nine intervention group, children from individual referrals. Um, and we really hope and look forward to that model growing um, to be as busy as the, the Atelier model is. I'm really grateful for you listening to my talk today. Um, I am really, really keen to speak with anybody that, that wants to, to work and, and listen more and talk to me more about different ideas around the Atelier model and how this is operating with some inspiration from the Reggio Emilia approach and also how that idea around having a very very strong link to the inclusion team to the inclusion cell um, in the form of intervention how how that that is able to continue to drive forward within the GFM um, in the future I really hope and look forward to being able to hopefully initiate um, a similar model in, in primary school in the primary schools and being able to look at how these different intervention programs can be used across the whole of the GFM. Thank you for your time today.